got my cholesterol checked and nobody ever mentioned that needed to be I got my cholesterol checked. Yeah. Doctors told me it's great. Doctors told me nothing to worry about. Yeah, yeah, because they never said anything was behind it. Perfect. So I want you to know about cholesterol before it's ever a problem. I don't want you to come here or have a conversation or learn about cholesterol because it's bad, because you're, you're, you're back against the wall, or because you're not taking medication. I want you to learn about cholesterol while it's good because I want you to keep it good. I want you to keep it in a place where it's going to make your body healthy and stay healthy. It's a lot less expensive to stay healthy than to fix sick. And the biggest problem in America is most people are sick. Do you know how much money we spend on chronic illness in America? Per year. Three? Three hundred million. There's three million I was going to walk over. Yeah. Three hundred million. He's a biker. That's a, that's a, good, that's a good answer. Three hundred million. You take the over or under on three hundred million. Over. Yeah, over. Way over. over. Way over. Over. I'll, I'll go say fine then. It's yeah. over. But, okay, I just want you to get into thinking about what's going on in America because we're spending so much money. It's literally bankrupting our country. So I want to give you the empowerment to make choices that are different for yourself, for your loved ones, for your family. Because if you can make different choices, you get different outcomes and different answers. This is a, a video. It's five minutes long. It's going to talk to you about cholesterol. It's, you can Google this. This is, on, uh, this is on YouTube. It's by AstraZeneca. They did a beautiful job. I wish I had access to their, their team of graphic designers to be able to make a video like this. It's beautiful. It's awesome. It's great information. But I want you to listen to her voice because she's dreamy. Okay, ready? Dreamy? Wait till you hear her. She's dreamy. All right. So, like I said, you can Google this and watch this on your own at home after the talk. So, why cholesterol clogs your arteries? Fatty deposits, including cholesterol in the walls of arteries. It's a major cause of cardiovascular disease. It's The quiz at the end is the quiz. It illustrates the key stages in its development and its main impact on cardiovascular health. Cholesterol is a natural, fat like substance and is essential to health. However, too much cholesterol in your blood can be harmful. Cholesterol is produced in the liver, but can also be found in certain foods, such as those high in saturated fats. There are many types of cholesterol. The main type involved in atherosclerosis is called LDLC, or bad cholesterol. Another type of cholesterol, HDLC, is called good cholesterol. <coughs> it's important to increase HDLC as well as reduce LDLC when treating high cholesterol. A normal artery wall consists of three main layers a thin, smooth layer that lines the inside of the artery to help blood flow, a muscular, elastic layer that helps the artery pulse to push blood around the body, and a tough outer layer to protect the artery. The exact cause of atherosclerosis is not known, but several factors, including smoking, high blood pressure, diabetes, and high cholesterol, are known to damage the smooth lining of the artery or contribute to atherosclerosis. Once this layer is damaged, the bad cholesterol, LDLC, can get into the wall of the artery. There are four key stages in the development of atherosclerosis. The body tries to defend against the invasion of LDLC into the artery walls by activating specialized cells called macrophages to consume the LDLC. They become enlarged cholesterol enriched cells called foam cells that are embedded in the vessel wall. The accumulation of foam cells can be seen by the presence of fatty streaks in the vessel wall. As the fatty streaks grow, the body tries to protect the artery from them by surrounding them in a fibrous capsule. At this stage, the growth is called a plaque. As the plaque gets bigger, the body tries to preserve the blood flow through the artery. The plaque expands into the elastic layer, which stretches in order to keep the opening of the artery the same. If the plaque continues to grow, its expansion will eventually intrude on the inner opening of the vessel as the elastic layer cannot stretch anymore. This reduces the ability of blood to get through the artery. At this stage, physical symptoms such as angina may appear. Also, over time, calcium may be deposited in the plaque, making it hard and inflexible. This reduces the ability of the artery to expand to increase
increase blood flow when needed, for example during exercise. As the plaque grows into the artery opening, it squeezes the blood through an ever smaller gap. The resulting increase in pressure at the narrowing can damage the capsule covering the plaque, which may then rupture, resulting in a blood clot that can completely block the artery. Depending on the location of the blockage, the consequences, such as stroke or heart attack, may be severe and could be life-threatening. Atherosclerosis is progressive, and it can take many years before symptoms appear. But some people can have no symptoms, even with extensive atherosclerosis, and are at risk from sudden death. The symptoms depend on the site of the affected artery. In the heart, it can manifest as chest pains, angina. In the brain, as a type of mini-stroke called transient ischemic attacks. And to the legs is a cramp-like condition called intermittent claudication, which can result in amputation of the limb. If a plaque ruptures, the resulting blood clot may block the artery and cause a heart attack or a stroke, which can often be fatal. Atherosclerosis may cause the artery wall to weaken, causing it to bulge under the pressure from the blood. This bulge, called an aneurysm, can rupture and the resulting bleed called a hemorrhage can be fatal. We hope, after this presentation, that you understand how the bad cholesterol, LDLC, contributes to cardiovascular disease and atherosclerosis, and what that means for your health. We also hope you appreciate why always taking your medication, as prescribed by your doctor, is so important in maintaining low LDLC and high HDLC in order to reduce your cardiovascular risk. Alright, <clears throat> so. so, when the doctor gives you medication, do you think people take it here and there, or do you think people take it every single day? Probably every day. Every day, you think they miss a day? <coughs> no. No, people don't miss a day. Because they're so concerned about what could happen, the outcome can be death, stroke, embolism. You can have all sorts of different cardiovascular issues that can kill you. So it becomes a pretty serious topic that I want to bring your awareness to. And I just want to tell you, if, if a cardiologist would present this material like this, there'd be an entire auditorium full. But because a chiropractor says it, eh, it loses some vitality or, or some robust character to the conversation. But everything I'm going to tell you is everything every cardiologist knows but it's just a twist on the story that I want you to hear. How many of you have heard The Wizard of Oz? You guys familiar with the story? Mm -hmm. Summarize it in five words. Keep it quick. What's it about? Never no five place words, like but home. real quick. <laughs> what? No place like home. No place like home. And who's it about? Dorothy. Dorothy. You ever heard of Wicked? Yeah. What's it about? Well, that's right, Wicked. What? My boss. What's it about? <laughs> Focus. Focus. What's it about? That Wicked Witch. The Wicked Witch. Is she not in The Wizard of Oz? No. Same story, same people, different yeah. story, same yeah. people? Full twist? Yeah. So I want to talk to you about a myth in healthcare, because there's myths. Most people think that healthcare is all fact. And I'll say healthcare is about details of information that we have, that we utilize to the best of our understanding. But if you go back through a lot of clips on the internet, you'll hear of the phrase, what we used to think is what we now understand, meaning we were wrong, and now we understand differently. There's lots of myths in healthcare, but you never hear them admitted as being wrong. You just hear how they're now right. You'll hear certain surgeries that they do now, where they say they do it a certain way because the other way is barbaric, or we don't do it that way anymore. We have a much better way of doing it which isn't to say it was wrong, but it's constantly progressing and getting better. What I want you to know is this conversation is going to progress and it's going to get better. Because right now it's not very accurate. And I'm going to rewatch the video with you. And I'm going to pause it when there's an inaccuracy or a discrepancy or a way that I want to create a different perspective just like Wicked did. Because I want you to hear a conversation in a different way that makes you ask better questions to get better care. Because you know what the leading cause of death was 100 years ago? Cholesterol. No, okay. But they didn't say that. They didn't know. Heart, we knew heart, about heart vitamins back heart then. Disease. Heart disease. Okay? Cancer is right up there, too. You know what the leading cause of death is in America now? Heart disease. 
heart disease. And right behind it is? Cancer. So if you've been spending, how much money do we spend a year, do you think, on, on the heart and chronic illness? How much money do you think we spend on the five leading chronic illnesses in the world, in, in America? Do you know what they are? Heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes, and obesity. Five leading causes of chronic illness. Do you know how much we spend per year on that? Three billion. Three billion. I'm going to give you a big hug. Okay? Three billion dollars. In America, we spend about two trillion dollars. Okay? Really? No. Okay, I'm sorry. Probably 400 billion on, on chronic illness. But the total cost works out to be two trillion. I'm just going to get to the stat for you. I have to figure out how to get out of this without losing. My experience on Chrome. Not doing too good right now. All right. Someone text Abby. Come up here. Cast to YouTube. I don't know. She's going to say sit right here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. There you go. Now she's good. So I'm going to throw a couple of stats for you right now. I'm going to run through. So what do I want to do? Because myths, if I talk about myths in healthcare, if I talk to you about um, flu season, okay, anybody hear about flu season? When is flu season? When's flu season? Fall and winter. Yeah. Fall and winter. So then where does the flu go in the summer? Dormant. Dormant. Does it have a summer home? It doesn't go anywhere. It goes on a floor. It goes on a floor, you know. So it doesn't go anywhere. What happens is your body's susceptible. Which means that if you think that flu is caused by the bugs, then you're going to try and create solutions to kill the bugs. But if the bugs are still here in the summertime but people don't get sick, how can you blame it on the bugs? It's really about our bodies. And if our body becomes susceptible to something, then we get sick. So if you can strengthen the body and stop our body's ability to get sick by defending ourselves better... You see the problem from a different angle. You try to create a different solution. So cholesterol, what I want to show you is a different solution. Because they'll give you all the statistics. You can find all this on heart.org. In fact, you can go to heart.org if you walk down the cereal aisle. Do you know where you see heart.org in the cereal aisle? Cereal. Yeah, on all the boxes of cereal that they designated as heart-healthy food. Okay, I just want to call them out because 20 years from now, you're not going to find that in the, heart cere in the cereal aisle. Because you're going to realize that cereal is not a heart-healthy food. Anything that comes from wheat and grain is not going to be heart-healthy. It's going to be inflammatory. Do you know what inflammation is in the body? When have you heard the term inflammation? You ever twist your ankle? What happens when you twist your ankle? Does it look like the good one or does it look different? Right? It, it's inflamed. It, it swells. And physiologically, what's happening in the ankle is different in that ankle than the other ankle. So I say that because in your body, right, do you, when you have a cholesterol issue and you have plaque, is it everywhere? No. No. Why isn't it everywhere? I mean, if you have a plaque problem, if you have a cholesterol problem, it should be everywhere in your body. Is that the case? No. No. So what does it do? Does it go to everywhere or does it go to certain places? Certain places. Yeah. What makes a plaque? How does your body form a plaque? She told you. Weak spots. Mm. Plaques are cholesterol that are attracted to weak spots. It's like the police. They don't pull over everybody. They pull over people who are violating our rules. Cholesterol floats around. They showed you the lining of the artery. Mm. You've got the drywall, you've got the two by fours, and you've got the outside of the building. Your artery wall is the intima, the media, and the outside wall of the, of the artery. The cholesterol doesn't stick like little posters here to the inside lining, they make you think you got a, a plaque in your artery like it grows inside the artery. Cholesterol goes along and it embeds into the wall in the 2 by 4s where the, where the insulation is. And it embeds there on purpose, not by accident. It doesn't float along and get attracted by accident. It's called chemotaxic, meaning it goes along and it finds where it needs to be and it jams into the arterial wall. And you know what it attracts? More. It does, but it attracts your immune system, a macrophage. A macrophage is a major immune cell. So the cholesterol goes to the site of a problem, sets off an alarm that triggers your immune system to show up. And we think that's a problem in our country. 
Our solution is to stop that process. To stop the LDL from going there because LDL is a bad guy. In fact, it invades, I'll let you hear say it again, it invades the lining of your artery. Invasion is not a popular, nice term. It's a negative, nasty term. When you embed the language with negative, you create an understanding that it, cholesterol is a bad thing for your body. If I tell you that cholesterol is really a fireman, the fire alarm goes off. Do they go everywhere in town or do they happen to know exactly where to go? No, so they go right to the scene of the problem. Do we drive by and we're like, whoa, way too many fire dudes there. We got to get rid of these guys. Get them out of here. Let's make a drug to stop the fire hall from releasing all those firemen in our town. Would that be a smart idea or a stupid idea? Stupid. So if I tell you that cholesterol is a fireman, I'm just going to tell you how the idea is of stopping cholesterol in your body. Because she even says, and they, the Heart Association, even says that cholesterol is actually good for your body. Cholesterol may also protect against heart attack and stroke. Now they're going to say HDL. HDL is a compound that helps to remove plaque and brings it towards your liver, where LDL brings it from the liver towards the site of the problem. Cholesterol is cholesterol, and it's made by your body. Three quarters of it. Three quarters of it's made by your body. But our approach in our country has been to change food. What are heart unhealthy foods? Bacon. Bacon. What else? Chimney stars. Okay. Butter. Like you to pieces, but nobody's going to tell you tips. Mm. You're good, though. <laughs> but what, what are heart healthy? What do people know are heart healthy or unhealthy foods? Foods high in cholesterol mm. are heart unhealthy, right? Do you think chefs invented white omelets, egg white omelets, or do you think medical doctors invented an egg white omelet? Mm. <laughs> Chefs were just trying to capitalize on people's interests, but they were told to eat an egg white because the yellow is bad for them because the yellow is where the cholesterol is. I'm going to tell you, if you want to be healthy, eat whole foods. Then. Your body needs the entire egg, not just part of it. So you're better off eating the whole thing. And you're better off eating it from a chicken that's healthy than a chicken that's unhealthy because it's the unhealthy part that's going to make you unhealthy. And unhealthy creates inflammation, and inflammation attracts cholesterol. If you think that cholesterol is a problem, you've missed the whole first four steps of a process. And therefore, you misunderstand the problem. Cholesterol is incredibly important. It's made by the body. Three quarters of it's made by the body. And if you cut out cholesterol, you cut out everything cholesterol is used for. Do you know what cholesterol is used for in the body? It makes hormones. It makes DHEA. It makes all the hormones that baseball players got in trouble for. They took it because it made them better athletes. It makes all your sex hormones, testosterone, estrogen. If you start taking, if you look at the, the, the <coughs> plot of how many cholesterol medications were issued, there's a rise just after it of Viagra prescriptions. Because if you cut out the whole cascade of hormones, of sex hormones, you cut out the impact of what those hormones are going to do for the body. You start, start to suppress sexual function in the body. So when you start to cut out cholesterol, you cut out everything it's used for. And it's used to make amazing hormones. It's used to make progesterone, which sustains the pregnancy of a woman. So you should do a lot of really healthy things to your body. Your body makes it on purpose. So instead of thinking of it as a bad thing, instead of looking at cholesterol coming along, okay, and depositing or being invaded into the wall in your artery, think of it as going there on purpose because it attracts your immune system. And your immune system makes something called a foam cell. In your house, next to your windows, if you have a crack, you want to put in foam in there because it stops a crack. So it solves one problem, but if you keep doing the thing that caused the problem over and over and over again, you're basically, it's the defini definition of insanity. You haven't understood the problem, so you keep repeating it, and the consequence of that is going to be death. Because you're not listening to your body. Your body brings a chemical that initiates an immune reaction and the immune system in your body is trying to solve a problem. The problem is we don't recognize the problem, so we keep doing it. So the problem is, is that if you ignore the problem and these, these cholesterol molecules go into the body, attract the macrophages that turn into these foam cells that turn into a plaque like she showed you, if you let the problem go long enough, it'll create a big problem that can kill you. Absolutely. But to think that's the problem is to miss the entire point of how the body really works. Because if you understand how the body really works, you want to maintain it at a healthy state, not wait till you're sick and broken. Our country is going to go bankrupt because we're trying to break, fix broken things all the time. 
It's a sad reality. It's a sad reality what's happening, but when you get into how this all works and what it turns into in the body, you get to the fact that there's a national crisis. Health care costs the 2.2 trillion that I was talking about. That's the cost of health care. That's an unsustainable number, okay? It's 15, it's going up to 16, up to 17%. It's more expensive than most countries make in a year. And it causes bankruptcies. And more and more of them every single year. Okay? Every single year. And most of them, hello, oh, change. Most of them are gone to spend on things that are called chronic illness. You know what chronic means? It's been there for a long, long time. time. A long time. So you didn't fix it right the first time. It just turned into something very problematic, very chronic, okay? And so the chronic illnesses, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, obesity, arthritis, $400 billion. $400 billion every year. That's from Tesla, okay? That's from 06. So you know that number's higher now. So just picture the fact that $400 billion every year, and it's been a problem for 100 years. If you spend that kind of money, picture giving somebody, picture giving a child, a neighbor who's giving a child, better than that to you. A neighbor gives a kid $1,000. Kid blows $1,000, comes back, it's like, I need $10,000. Neighbor gives him $10,000. Kid comes back, it's like, I need $100,000. Your neighbor gives him $100,000. At some point, you're going to turn to your neighbor and be like, are you crazy? Because we keep giving you all this money, and they keep blowing the money, and nothing's changing. Try to figure out the math of what we spend. And in 100 years, nothing's changing. We figured out how to treat it real well. But if you don't understand the problem, you're never going to create a solution. And you know we don't really understand the problem because when you walk down the cereal aisle, they put the little stickers on the foods, on the cereals, on the grains, on the wheat, that say that they're heart-healthy foods. Why? Because Cheerios doesn't contain cholesterol. There's no cholesterol in Cheerios. It comes from food products that are, that are made from animals. It's like the foods that, that say they don't have gluten in them. And you're like, oh, yeah, I, I imagine it, you know. Yeah, so no, so no gluten. It's like, well, yeah, of course there's no gluten in them. So just understand, if you don't understand the problem, then you're going to end up paying a ton of money for something. And it will surprise you to know that cholesterol itself isn't bad. In fact, it's just one of the many substances that are made by your body. And it comes from the animal-based foods. And they know that. So when you put it on a cereal box and you say it's heart healthy, you're misleading the public because the public thinks I can eat cereal and it won't affect my heart. When in fact you eat cereal, wheat and corn produces an omega-6, omega-9, an, an inflammatory oil in your body. And if it's pro-inflammatory oil, it's going to create an inflammatory response. That's what the oils that cause the swelling of your leg in the first place. So if you twist your ankle, you want those oils. Those are critical oils. But the American diet has them in disproportionate amounts. And so instead of addressing the problem, the source, we figure we can disrupt it downstream and it's not going to be an issue, it won't be a problem. The industrialized world suffers from this. From a food industry that doesn't understand health. From a healthcare industry that doesn't understand food. And a sick insurance industry focused solely on alleviating symptoms and a corporate world health uh, world left holding the bill for employees who have no incentive to be healthy. I don't know where that hits you, but to me that's the problem. Is that if you work at a company and your health insurance is like $300 a year, or whatever for your family, a month, whatever it is for your family, and then you leave and you go to a smaller company, your health care cost rises. And then if you leave that company and go work for yourself, your health care costs even more. But you haven't changed. If you haven't changed, it means that your health care insurance isn't based on your health. If you don't base it on your health, then you have no incentive to be healthy. And if you have no incentive to be healthy, and someone else is paying that bill, that bill is likely to be large. And if that bill is large, and the sick insurance industry is, is focused on alleviating symptoms, go to the hospital. There will be a big smiley face sign that says, we, our goal is to reduce your pain. How are we doing? When your goal is to alleviate pain, and you have a rock in your shoe, do you want an aspirin? So if your goal is to alleviate pain, you're pretty much missing the actual problem. You're just trying to placate things. And when you placate something, you allow it to persist and fester and become bigger. And that's where we are today. A healthcare industry that doesn't understand food, if it did, a lot of the foods that kids eat would be illegal. 
when you understand that sugar is a leading cause of, of cancer production and that all the, can all the sugary foods we put at eye level for children and that when you walk around places, it's all, it's advertised as children, 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 and you put on the cereal all the sugar, all of that, the wheat, the corn, the sugar, produces inflammation in your body. And the inflammation is what causes your body to produce the cholesterol molecules. And the molecules go to the sites in your artery walls that are damaged, nicks, scrapes, scars. And it goes there and attracts your immune system to heal your arteries. And in healing the artery, it creates a foam cell that fills in that gap to fix it. And if you'd stop eating those foods and causing that problem, everything would work out great. But because we don't recognize that as the problem, it persists. What happened when Mayor Bloomberg tried to make giant Slurpees illegal? What happened? Remember that in New York City a couple years ago? What happened? Everybody went crazy. They went crazy. You're, 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 you're restricting my civil liberty, you know, my civil rights. My civil liberty, I don't know what they were claiming for. Because I want a 32-ounce Slurpee. I, you know, I, I deserve to be able to buy that and eat that. Okay, but your health care will cost you guys if you're going to do it. God bless you, I don't care if you do it. But when the cost is, is evened out over everybody, just understand you're spending, you're paying money for that. You're paying money because we don't address the actual problem, and the problem is our food, our lifestyle. What does your body require to express health? Lack of food? You ever sign up that one, son? <laughs> <laughs> If that's not the most important question or conversation you should be having with your doctor, I don't know what is. But until that's the question they ask, you're never going to get a worthy answer out of it. When your goal is to bring down your cholesterol by giving you a drug and never asking why it's high, then you're never going to address the problem. So what was your answer? Natural foods. Natural foods. What's a natural food? You're perfect. What's a natural food? Any veggies, um, fruits, veggies that aren't... Non-processed non foods. Non-processed. So there's like another huge nature. thing. So if a food is natural, then your response to it is going to be natural, which means if a food is unnatural, your response is going to be unnatural. And unnatural is abnormal, and abnormal is the definition of disease. Every illness we have is defined by the word abnormal. It's abnormal physiology. So an abnormal food response, abnormal physiology response. How is your exercise supposed to be on a daily basis? What are you supposed to do on a daily basis for exercise? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> cardio up. Get your cardio up. Yeah. Cardio up. You're designed to have to move enough to avoid being killed by something and move enough to be able to collect enough food to, to sustain yourself. In America today, you have to be able to get yourself from bed to the kitchen table, the fridge or to the grocery store. And all that can take less than 100 steps if you do it right or wrong. So a lot of the things we do is that we, we violate how our physiology is designed to work. And all I can tell you is you're made to move. Harvard studies said a lack of exercise will take seven years off your life. Pretty simple, pretty obvious. If you don't move, you're not doing what your body requires to be alive. You're supposed to eat food that grows, that's natural, and that's healthy. If you don't, your body's not going to function right. It's not going to work right. You have to grow the food. So the food itself is healthy. Which if you pay attention to the commercials on TV, hear what they say. Now, no offense to Wendy's, at least they're honest about it, they say our food is made with all natural ingredients. We don't use any fillers, any artificial things. Now, our chickens are antibiotic free, hormone free. If it's good for our food to be antibiotic free, what do you think antibiotics do to your body? You don't want it in your food, you want it in your body? But think about how often people have antibiotics. So when we talk about what's healthy, just know that your LDL, your cholesterol, those are the firemen going to the fire, and the HDL are when they come home. Same firemen, all made from the same molecules, just serving a different purpose. Okay? And the problem isn't the cholesterol, it's the inflammation. It's the inflammation that's causing the issue in your body. We want to take the fire truck screaming down the road, racing to the fire away from the fireman. We want to fix this guy. Okay? Because overweight, lack of activity, smoking, alcohol, all these things are contributing factors, contributory. I don't know how she said it, but she's muffled voice. 
Was it contributory for a heart disease? <laughs> She's a Brit. <laughs> or she's Australian. I don't know. She's gorgeous. So listen to her. Yeah. Certain diseases and medications. Medicine. Medicine is going to be something that causes an increase in your cholesterol. Because it's abnormal. It's processed. It has to. Okay? There are people with genetic disorders that promote the amount of cholesterol in their body. But that's like the extreme. That's like that 7% rule of anything that we don't need to talk about. Talk about the main people, and it's lifestyle. It's not genetic. Cholesterol's not a genetic problem. It's a lifestyle problem. And your lifestyle is dictating that your body needs a lot of cholesterol to fix stuff that's happening. And if you don't address the fix, if you don't try to fix something, you can drug the heck out of it, but you haven't solved anything. You can take pain pills for the rock in your shoe, but you haven't fixed it. Nice breakfast. That looks breakfast. good. Breakfast. It looks delicious. I mean, give me a break. That's amazing. Mm. Croissants, muffins, cakes, cookies, candies. All the things your mother said, not, you're done, not, not anymore. All the things we know to limit. Unfortunately, there's no one over your shoulder smacking your hand anymore. Thankfully, there might be somebody in New York. Most of the time, people just eat that, and there's no recourse. There's no responsibility. So I just want you to know it comes at a cost comes at a cost. And people think it's a solution. Now, I'm going to tell you, it might be for a short-term crisis, but for a long-term, that's what leads to chronic illness and it's bankrupting our country. Stick to what you talked about. Stick to Mother Nature. And if you're not doing a lot of it, just do some. Anything more than what you're doing will move you towards health. The more you do, the healthier you're going to be. But when you stick to this, you don't have nearly the same problems as when you stick to this. So get back to Mother Nature. Make sure the things you're eating are eating Mother Nature. And have less of the heart-healthy, grain, processed, refined foods. And your body's going to function better. It says on there when diet and exercise are not enough. They say because they're enough. So most people don't do it enough. So do something to change your physiology. Do it in a meaningful way. If you don't appreciate your food when you eat it, your body's not going to respond to it the same way. You're programmed to have an emotional response. To have gotten food in this world would have been a pretty emotional thing. It was a great thing. Appreciate your food. Focus on your food. Take time to slow down. Take time to stop. Eat Mother Nature. It'll make a huge difference on how your body works. You'll be less inflamed. You'll have less of a need to make the cholesterol. And your body will start to respond and become healthy. Okay? Okay. 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 <laughs> I'm going to ask you guys at some point to go back and listen to AstraZeneca. Because I want you to hear the commercial of how she embeds negativity in terms of thinking cholesterol is a problem. That, they, that it, it invades the tissue. And it causes a reaction that leads to <coughs> reverse it and look at it the other way like Wicked did to Elizabeth the Bonds. And see it as a response to a problem and fix that problem, not the, not the drug. And your outcome will be much better. All right. Have a great night, you guys. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your time.